By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic and also welcome back at the Raging Bull series. We have reached round number two and in round number two, we are going to look at a match between Michel, who is on a mono black deck. You could say mono black on steroids because he's added those blue power cards, Ancestral Recall, um, Time Walk, and of course the Time Twister to his deck. It is a beautiful deck, but I think the deck that he's playing against is even more gorgeous and that is the deck by alexander it is completely alpha it is completely green now before i go to the deck decks i've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks i would first like to point out to you that if you want to skip that as always you can check out the description below and there you will find a timestamp click on the timestamp mtg games and that will take you straight to the action and in the description below you can also find more information about the raging bull series and this whole tournament so if you want to know more about the event check the description below. And for now, we are going to continue with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of Michel. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Michel. So as you can see, it is mono black with those three power cards that I mentioned in the introduction. So Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, and Time Twister. Those cards, of course, incredibly strong, but I really like this deck. Most of the deck is beautifully black bordered. And he's also added the Underworld Dreams, which actually works quite well in his aggro strategy, right? We also see four dark rituals. So it's just your classic mono black aggro deck, isn't it? I think what Michel really wants to do is get a dark ritual out, get a hypnotic specter out, turn one, just a very classic move, you know, start discarding cards and just hope that his opponent doesn't have a sword supply shares or a bolt. Well, good news for Michel, his opponent is playing mono green, so he does not. So that is already a great start for Michel. I also love that one royal assassin that we see here in the deck it is, it is such an old school card and it's great to see players playing with it. It's probably not the most efficient tool in this deck, but he's probably playing it out of love for this epic card and I really, really respect it. And, you know, I think as a one-off, it can be quite nice, quite a surprise, you know, hitting the board out of nowhere. I also like the inclusion of the four Suchis. Four Suchi, of course, here is quite good. It's, it's protection from the abyss. Again, if your opponent has a circle of protection black, you can kind of work around it with the Suchis. So that works. I also really like the Underworld Dreams. Underworld Dreams used to be used only in decks completely built around Underworld Dreams, but the card is just too good not to use in these strategies. Your aggro black strategy and having that extra points of damage coming in through the Underworld Dreams is usually too much to bear for an opponent that's already under pressure. So it's really cool. I'm also really hoping to see the two Sengir Vampires in action. Again, a card I really love and always enjoy seeing in, in a Magic uh, match. I think the one Drain Life is something to look out for as well. Perhaps in this deck, I would have played with an extra Drain Life. But of course, the hard thing always is we all know what we want to put in a deck, but what, what do we take out? So I completely understand that Michel went for one Drain Life instead of multiples. But Drain Life, I find, is of course good in a mono black deck, right? This You could say this is a mono black deck, uh, but it's also really good with Dark Rituals. If you draw Dark Rituals later in the game, they can sometimes be dead cards. But if you combine them with Drain Life, they become, you know, lightning bolts on their own. They become quite powerful. And um, of course, Dark Ritual also works very well with that gruesome card there, Mind Twist. And we also see a Demonic Tutor. Okay, this is the deck of Michel. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Mono Green Alpha. Let's take a look. And here we see the Mono Green Alpha deck by Alexander. And Alexander is kind of on a mission. He wants to make the strongest Mono Green Alpha deck possible. And he's taking it to all these events. And he knows that it's gonna be tough, right? Limiting yourself only to Alpha. But I mean, he loves the game, he loves the core set, and this is what he wants to do. And looking at this deck, it is actually pretty strong. We see Llanowar Elves and Ice Storm, that's a combination I always like, and I hope for Alexander that, you know, he can get uh, he can get going with a good start, have a turn one Llanowar Elves, turn two Ice Storm, that would be quite nice, kind of get the tempo advantage, and from there kind of work out, start playing out your bigger creatures, you know, your Juggernaut, your um, your War Mammoth, and then using your Giant Growth at the right time to kind of put pressure on your opponent to remove some creatures, because it is tough when you only have green, because obviously you're missing cards like Lightning Bolt, cards like Swords to Plowshares, it's really hard to get rid of creatures. Actually, the best way 
for Alexander to get rid of creatures is the Berserk. So Berserk, of course, is a great card to use for yourself, especially on the Juggernaut there. You know, you can deal 10 trample damage if you just have a Juggernaut and one Berserk. But it's also a very good weapon to destroy your opponent's creatures. Yes, you take double damage for once, but then the creature is dead. For example, if Alexander is going to face Hypnotic Spectre and his hand is still quite full, then that one Berserk can be quite handy. And talking about weapons against the Hypnotic Spectre, we do see four absolutely gorgeous creatures here in the deck, four giant spiders, and I mean, I love this. I really hope that you get your Llanowar Elf out quickly, get the giant spider out like a turn early, gobble up those Hypnotic Spectres, maybe play a giant growth on your giant spider, making a giant, giant spider. How cool is that? Eat up a Sengir Vampire. That would be awesome. You know, I think it, we have to be realistic as well here. Alexander, you need all the stars to be aligned. You need to get all the right cards at the right moment to win this confrontation. But if that happens, you definitely stand a chance. Okay, this is the beautiful deck of Alex. We looked at the beautiful deck of Michel. That means we're ready. Let's go to round number two of the Raging Bull series. Game number one, here we go. On the left, we have Michel with his mono black aggro deck with that little blue splash, right? So black on steroids, I guess. And on the right, we see Alexander playing his old mono green alpha deck. Look at him go here, starting with a Lana Elf. So he's on the play, passing turn. Also check out his play mat, it's insane. There we see a Swamp by Michel. There's a second green, does he have that Ice Storm? That would be quite good right now. We also see a Sinkhole, by the way, in the hand of Michel. Let's see what he's going to do. Tapping a green for another Lana Elves. Tapping two, there's the Elfish Archers. A 2-1 creature with first strike. And he's passing the turn. There we see a drain life in the hand of Michel. I think he's going to cast a sinkhole. Does he have a black knight perhaps? Yeah, playing the black knight. That's a better option here. So the black knight allows him to block the Lanawar else. And he could trade with the elfish archer if he wants to. And here we see Alexander kind of thinking about his next move. Attacking here, offering the trade. Let's see if Michel takes the trade or if he takes the damage instead. Only two cards in hand left there for, uh, for Alexander. There we see the block, so he is taking the trade and there is a giant growth. So killing it and then tapping four hands empty, playing a giant spider. So a lot of pressure here early on from Alexander. There we see another knight and a pass. And it looks like Michel is kind of stuck on two lands here. So maybe Alexander can take this as an advantage. I guess he's gonna attack here with giant spider and elfish archers. That is exactly what's happening. Again, offering the trade here. So the Elfish Archer could be traded for the Black Knight. That is exactly what Michel does, blocking the Archer. So both creatures die. Two damage comes in from the Spider. And let's see, and he's passing turn. Can Michel find a Lantern? Yes, finding a Swamp. So he could play that out. And then if he wants to, he could play the Chaos Orb. Could also... Ooh, there's a Hypnotic Spectre. Didn't see that one in the hand. That's, of course, a better option. But Alexander does have that giant spider to block. Playing three. There's an Ice Storm on the dual land. So that means that Misha no longer has access to blue mana. And a pass turn. There's another Swamp. He could cast the Chaos Orb, flip exactly, and then he can flip on the spider. So now it has to flip. Let's see if he can hit it. Ah, no, he's missing it. So that means the giant spider stays on the board. So that is a, a small advantage here for Alexander. Looked like that flip took a little bit too much air. And couldn't land properly. There's force number four by Alexander and a pass. So Alexander's also kind of stuck because of that one hippie. He could, of course, consider playing a little bit more aggressive. But then again, I don't know what the one card in his hand is. Maybe it's too valuable to lose. 
to the hypnotic specter. Because this is kind of the luck that Alexander needs to win these games. You know, his opponent's stuck on mana, not finding... You know, if he, if he gets four mana, I think the game is going to be over pretty quickly. I cannot see what that one card is, though. And Alexander's really contemplating, do I want to attack here or not? He decides not to. There's an Urborg, so now he's got four mana. Are we going to see that Suchi? He's going to play the Suchi. And of course, Michel doesn't know that Alex is playing with a mono green deck. So he's probably waiting for a better land to destroy with his sinkhole. Not knowing that that's not going to happen because Alex is playing completely mono green. Only from the alpha, only with cards from the alpha expansion. And there's the pass. So there is another swamp and all those swamps are also making his drain life better. Two single in hand, a city in a bottle and a drain life city in a bottle useless in this matchup. He's going to block and play the giant growth. Okay, gobbling up. Gobbling up here at the Suchi, but now if Michel uses his drain life, he can actually kill the spider, so that might be interesting. And now he's going to use the drain life, killing the spider. That is going to give him three life as well, so he's going to go up to 16. I think that's what both players are now discussing. Sorry, he's going to go, um, going to go up to 21, of course. He's on 18, gaining life. I'm not quite sure. I think that he's, he's getting a life too much, but okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see later if it's actually relevant. I believe he took, he played a drain life for three, so then he should get three life, go back up to 21 instead of 22. And okay, there is an ice storm. And this is really annoying for Alexander here because still, he, well, he can't attack, but then he's gonna lose one of his one ones. You really don't wanna do that. I feel like Alexander is kind of losing momentum here. There is a mind twist in hand for Michel, which is quite useless. So his hand of Michel is pretty useless. I mean, he's got four cards, but they're all not really going to help him. So Michel does, or sorry, Alexander does have the time here in this match to kind of make it happen. Look at that, attacking with everything. Perhaps he's got a giant growth in hand. He's going to block the... Script sprites, there's a Berserk, even better. So he trades it and deals two points of damage. So we see Michel dropping back to 20. Finding a time walk, he cannot play that out because he that Underground Sea got destroyed. And again a pass, so Michel is very unfortunate here. There's an attack, so he's dropping to 18. Tapping two, okay, there is a Chaos Orb. That is quite nice and also a good decision by Alex not to keep it in hand because Michel has that mind twist. Attacking again, putting him on 16, playing an Elfish Archer and passing turn. So it's looking quite good here for Michel. A soul ring, sorry for Alexander I mean, not for Michel. I mean Michel is just finding all the wrong cards at all the wrong moments in the game. He's now going to take four points of damage, drop to 12, and a pass turn here. I wonder if Michel is going to play a Mind Twist for one. Why not? Here, Dark Ritual, another card that's not going to help him much. And he's passing the turn. Maybe that's not a Mind Twist then in hand. I thought it was a Mind Twist. Going to drop to eight. And things are looking really good for Alexander here. Look at that hand. He's so unfortunate. Finding another Dark Ritual. I would have played the Mind Twist a while ago, by the way. Now he's going to drop to four, I believe. Wow. There are more creatures hitting the board here. Of course, Alexander doesn't have to worry about the balance. What card is that? Couldn't see it. That's it. Wow. Alexander winning the first game, I guess. So this is one of those moments where for the green player, the stars are aligned. And Michel, you were so unfortunate 
with your draws in that game one that was uh, pretty ridiculous. And now both players are going to go to their sideboards. But uh, man, this is unexpected. I'm really happy to see the green alpha deck taking a win here, game one. And now both players are going to sideboard and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for Alex. So that means that Michelle is on the play, starting with a Mishra's Factor in the pass. There is a Forest. Are we again going to see a Lanora Elves turn one? There is the Lanora Elves in the pass. There is the draw. We see some Paralyzes there. You could play a Paralyze on the Elf. Yeah, I think this is a great play. So Paralyze there on the Lanora Elves. Paralyze an Enchant Creature. And uh, it says the creature doesn't untap during the untap phase. Instead, the owner can pay four to untap it during the upkeep. So this is really slowing Alexander down. And that's exactly what, of course, Misha wants to do. There is a Demonic Tutor in hand, it seems. What else does he have? He's got an Urborg, I believe. So he, he has his land drop. Another Paralyze. Could consider playing the Paralyze. Playing a Demonic Tutor first. Interesting. What is he going to tutor for? Could perhaps go for the Soul Ring because he's a pretty light on mana, but that probably not the best choice to make though. Couldn't see the whole hand, so it's hard to kind of know what he's going to look for. I don't think he had a blue source or else he could go for Ancestral Recall. I mean, of course he still can and kind of hope that he's going to draw into a blue mana. Perhaps I would have waited with the tutor then again. I don't know what's in his hand. I know there's one Paralyze in there still, and I think I saw an Urborg. Looks like he's chosen the card. He's shuffling. And he's putting the deck back, taking the card in hand. Hasn't had a land drop yet, so we're going to find out if that was an Urborg in hand or not. If he doesn't play a land, it's not an Urborg. Oh, it was a Mishra's Factory. Okay, passing turn here. Ooh, it looks like he looked up the Underground Sea, giving him access to black and blue mana. There is an Ice Storm. And of course, the attack, attack with the Script Sprites, putting Michel here on 19. And a pass turn. There's a Black Knight. There's the Underground Sea that he looked up, tapping three. There's a Royal Assassin. Super cool. I love to see Royal and Paralyzed together. That's also a classic combo. There's a Forest. And Michel kind of knows for sure that he's going to lose the Lana Royal Elves here. But of course, you know, if Alexander attacks, he can also choose to kill the Script Sprites. Four forests here. I do see a giant spider in hand. Tapping two. What is he going to do? Playing a Chaos Orb. Is he going to flip here on the Royal? I think he has to. Yeah, I think he has. Royal Assassin is so good against Alexander's deck. It's insane. Okay, now we're going to see the second flip of the match. Alexander really taking his time. Here we go. Is he going to hit the Royal? Yes, that's a full hit. Alexander taking care here of the Royal Assassin. It is a goner. And we see uh, great sportsmanship there from Michel applauding here for uh, Alexander. Everybody's really friendly always in the old school community. It's really nice to see. And we see Michel dropping here to 18 because of that script sprite attack. There's a second. Oh, another Royal coming in from the sideboard. Oh, this is tough. This is tough for Alex. Just got rid of the first one and now there's a second one. Oh, and he's got Juggernaut in hand. Juggernaut is just not really good when there's a Royal on the board. This is so tough. He's gonna attack nonetheless. The Royal still has Summoning Sickness, so he can't use it yet. So he's gonna take a damage, gonna go to 19 or 17. But this is just not great. There is a Giant Spider. And a pass turn. Yeah, and this is not ideal for Alexander. Look at that Hypnotic Spectre, of course, can be blocked with the Giant Spider. So he's first going to play out a Suchi. That makes more sense. And he's going to pass the turn. So he's choosing not to kill 
The script writes, This is so tough for Alex here to kind of work around the uh, the Royal Assassin. I mean, if he does nothing, the Royal is going to kill the Lana Royal on end step. And this is what I talked about in the deck, deck tech section, that when you play Mono Green Alpha, you don't really have, you know, the Lightning Bolts, the Swords. There are no really good answers to creature threats. So, I mean, he has to wait for the Royal to attack, which, of course, is not going to happen. So this is tough. He does play with the Rod of Ruin in the sideboard, so maybe he boarded that in and he could find Rod of Ruin. There is a Juggernaut, so I guess next turn he wants to go for an Alpha Strike. And here on end step, he's going to kill the Lana where Elves makes absolute sense, but things are looking really, really good for Michel here just because of that Royal Assassin. Still having that Paralyzed in hand. Sengir Vampire, that is a really sweet card, but he's missing a land. To cast it. Has a Black Knight in hand and an Hypnotic Spectre. If he can get rid of the Giant Spider. I think if you're Michel, you just have to be patient right now. Maybe play out your Knight and pass turn. to Just to see what Alexander is going to do. And if he's going to attack with everything, then you always have an option. Playing out the Black Knight, I think this is a good move. And passing the turn. So Alex drawing card for turn two cards in hand. I hope for Alex one of them at least is a Giant Grove, because if he attacks with everything here, then Misho can just do Suchi on Spider. Royal can kill Juggernaut, and he just takes one from the Sprite, so that's not really a problem. There he goes, Alpha Strike. So he's going to use the Royal first. Let's see what he's going to kill. Remember, next turn he can, of course, untap the Royal and kill another creature. But I do understand this move from Alexander. I mean, he has to do something. So Juggernaut is dead. He's going to block the Spider. Take one from the Sprites. And now I wonder if Alexander can do a Giant, giant Spider. There's a giant, giant spider, at least killing the Suchi. That is something, and dealing one point of damage here. So he's going to drop to 16. And now he's taking his turn. So now he can kill the giant spider, which is very important because he's got that Hypnotic Spectre in hand. So what I would do here is probably kill the giant spider, play out the hippie and pass turn. Oh no, you can also attack with the knight, of course. Playing the hypnotic. Killing the spider, exactly. And then he can attack with the knight. Yep, dealing two points of damage. And now kind of Michel is going to take over this game that already started, of course, when he played that second royal assassin. Royal so strong in this matchup. If Alexander can find his Rod of Ruin, he can maybe fight his way back into this. But it's not looking great for him. And a pass turn. Is he going to play the Paralyze? Paying, playing a Paralyze here on the script sprites. And he wants to do that so that he can... Uh, Discard the last card there in hand. Animate. Yeah, now he can attack for 5, 7 points in total, putting Alex on 11. That is bad news. And of course, he's also losing the card in hand. Losing a Hurricane. Oh! That Hurricane was actually kind of an alternative way to win or get a draw out. This is painful. And of course, he could use the Hurricane to kill the Hypnotic Spectre. But I feel that this game number two is going to be over very, very quickly, very soon. He can animate. I mean, he can play Sengir if he wants to. Maybe he shoot for style points. He can deal five points of damage now to Alex. Going to put him on six, play the Sengir. But he can also attack. And it looks like he's doing that. He's going to animate his factories, attack with everything, putting Alex here on two. Alex having this one card to save his life. 
and it's an elfish archer so that means it is one one so we are going to go to game number three game number three the decisive game one one let's see who gets this alexander on the play of course after losing that second game starting with a forest in the pass so no turn one lana elf Ooh, dark ritual hypnotic specter this is the scenario that alexander feared of course because now he's got to just pass. No, he cannot find Elfish Archers, Lanawer, nothing. Just pass turn. So he's going to take a hit and going to discard a card because of the Hypnotic Spectre. That is really unfortunate. There is a Mistress Factory attack for two. Are we going to see a Berserk here? Berserk, so he's going to take four points of damage. But at least the Hypnotic Spectre is gone. So this is something. Let's see what card he is going to pick. Pick in the middle one. And Alex losing the Ice Storm here. Going to drop to 16 as well. But at least he got rid of that Hippie. Finding a Soul Ring there. Playing green, tapping Soul Ring into play. And a pass turn. There is a Suchi. Let's see what he can do. Three cards there. It looks like he's got two lands. Paralyzed Terror and a Suchi in hand. He can, of course, attack for two. Chooses not to pass his turn. Perhaps against green, although you don't want to don't want to get a Berserk on your factory worker because he really needs those lands. There's a Lanawar Elf by Alex, by the way, in a pass. There is a Swamp, so now he can play the Suchi. And a pass here on tap by Alex. I mean, he's got a lot of mana. If he can find his one force of nature, that will be super sweet. He is playing one alpha main. So force of nature, eight, eight trampler. And he's passing the turn here. So this is unfortunate for Alex. If, if you know, if you're the green player, you really want to find more creatures at this stage in the game. We're around turn five. You want to kind of start building on your board presence. Animating and attacking here for six. If he takes it, he's going to drop to ten. That's exactly what he does. Dropping to ten here. And a pass turn. I really hope that Alex can find something to get back into this. A giant spider would kind of help with maybe a giant growth on the backup. We haven't seen a single war mammoth yet, even though he plays with a full uh, play set, so that would be quite nice. And there's the pass. So four cards in hand here by Alex and five cards in hand, it seems, for Michel, who's found another factory Gonna attack for seven. There he goes. Of course, he can pump the one factory. That's why I'm saying for seven, exactly. So that means Alex gonna drop to three. Oh, that's so low. After that game one, I really thought that maybe it could happen. But Alex here is with the back against the wall. One, one, round number two, Raging Bull series. Attacking with his one lonely Lunar Elf. Playing a Giant Grove. Does he have a Berserk? That would be kind of cool. Yes, he does. Ah, oh, man, Terror. That is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. But it was a nice last move here by Alex. And uh, that means the victory is here. Okay, also playing a Hurricane. That's it. Yeah, that means the victory is here for Michelle. Both players, well done. And thank you both for bringing such beautiful decks to the Raging Bull series and playing here on stream and on Timmy Talks. Thank you guys. Beautiful match to watch here. And I would also like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. 
And if you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking this video, commenting on this video and sharing it on your socials. All these things are free and they really help the channel move forward. Another thing that you can do here is uh, if you're new to old school, welcome, please consider subscribing and ring that bell. And we also have a Timmy Talks Patreon page. And the cool thing about that is that through our Patreon program, you can become a financial sponsor of the show. So you can help us help me keep the channel afloat. It already starts for just $1 a month. So there's probably an info card popping up right now. Please click on that card that will take you to the TV Talks Patreon page and you can read all about it. And one of the perks is that you will get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. Uh, we can even make an episode together. Like everything, everything is possible once you become a patron basically, right? Can I say that? Why not? Why not? I'm just gonna say it. And one of the cool things that is definitely gonna happen when you join the Patreon program is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? The light of morning. Way day now she rises. Way day now she rises. Way day now she rises. Her light in the morning. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Put him in the long boat until he's sober. Ich kann das Fink, das Sumba, kann